When prototyping your game, should you create everything from scratch? For example, this is what I have created in a few hours of work, a procedurally generated dungeon system for a dungeon crawler game. And this is what I was able to make in a day by using assets from the asset store, an actual game prototype. Specifically, I have used the dungeon architect asset and the polygon dungeon slow poly pack from Sinti. By the way, there is a big sale going on right now where you can grab these and other assets 50% off until August 21st with new assets joining the sale each week. Link in the description. As a game dev, I love making everything on my own. Like in my Voxel World engine project where we created from scratch in my tutorial series. But the problem with this is that you can often get stuck creating some system, which is often a very convenient way to procrastinate instead of making your actual game. Now, instead to prototype your idea, you can use an existing asset like Malbar's Character Controller Asset Pack to focus on making a playable prototype of your game. And you don't have to actually use those assets in your end product, so don't worry about making an asset flip out of your game. The point is to get your idea from your head into Unity to actually be able to play around with it. But obviously there are some trade-offs like this dungeon architect asset not being updated since 2022 while its price is pretty steep. So let me show you how I have created my dungeon crawler game prototype using those specific assets. I was able to install dungeon architect into Unity 6 preview version with no issues at all, well apart from pink materials. But then I had to first learn how to use the asset by reading the documentation. It usually takes less than an hour to get started with an asset, and here I have the same binary space partitioning algorithm procedurally generating my dungeon. But the benefits are the features of those assets, like for example the dungeon themes that allowed me to easily place items and lights inside the rooms of my dungeon to make everything look nice. Well, I do admit that I have added lights and post-processing to this implementation to make it look much nicer compared to my own version, but I don't think it would help much with my own dungeon generation system. Next, I have imported the Malbar's character controller asset, which provides animations, AI functionality, and, well, a custom character controller system. But again, I had to spend some time learning how to use it by reading through the documentation of this asset. Within another hour or so, I had a player character that uses the character from Synthi Dungeon Pack moving around the map. Another trade-off is that if you encounter an error when using those assets, it might be very hard to figure it out on your own. But when everything works fine, in a matter of hours you can create something that resembles a game that you have in your mind. Still, very often when using multiple assets in the same project, it is kind of difficult to make them work together. In my case, Dungeon Architect was generating a NavMesh data, so it was integrated with Unity NavMesh system. And the Animator Controller asset could use it by default for the AI functionality. So luckily for me, I was able to integrate the Character Controller asset and make the characters created with it walk around the dungeon generated by the Dungeon Architect asset. But to complete the prototype, I needed to somehow integrate the spawning system for the player enemies and patrol areas within the dungeon generated by the dungeon architect asset. It was all meant to be procedural, right? Well, this is another trade-off because I have spent about an hour or two figuring it out and where I couldn't find a good solution, I had to write my own script that would handle it. But finally, I had the spawn system working correctly. And that is why I think coding is one of the most important skills that the game dev should have to handle those situations. Anyhow, after one day of work, I had a working prototype of my game, albeit a bit rough around the edges. Still, it is a working prototype of my own game that I can actually play and test. So I would definitely suggest that you try using assets to prototype your idea for a game, since it can save you a lot of time up front before you actually start putting hours into your project. Thanks a lot for watching and for the support of all my awesome patrons. See you in the next video.